Sawadee Kap and good morning. Hello, uh, my name is Brian Hoffman. I am a uh, guide uh, here at Turnstile Tours. Uh, and uh, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us for our second in a series of four virtual programs called Thai Food in America, Passport to the Northeast. Uh, we're hosting these every Wednesday morning through June 2nd. Um, uh, and this series is a series of programs uh, sponsored by Thai Select USA. Uh, and we are exploring Thai cuisine and culture in the United States, specifically doing a deep dive into the stories of the Thai communities and restaurants here uh, within the Northeast of the United States. Uh, we started our, our series last week. So if you didn't see our program last week, it was all about Thai ingredients and how they make their way from Thailand to your local restaurant and home kitchen. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, I do, uh, do want to let you know that we encourage interaction and would love to hear your feedback and questions and comments. And we'll be dropping links in uh, to the chat. And that's where you can drop in your questions as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so you can just click on the chat there. And my colleague Amanda is in the background handling all that, uh, dropping in links and answering any questions that we don't, that you are not able to send us, but she will certainly send questions directly to myself and to our guests today as well. So she's going to uh, also drop in a link to where you can view our previous Thai program. And uh, we have a few more upcoming. So as I mentioned last week, May 12th, um, we did, which is now past, but you can view it uh, through the link you'll see on the chat. We learned all about how Thai ingredients got to our plate. Next week, you can still reserve your uh, ticket um, to find out uh, stories about families and communities uh, and local recipes here in New York City. Uh, we will be joined with uh, Queens expert Joe DiStefano, uh, and we will be visiting two restaurants, one in Queens and one in Brooklyn. And then uh, our final program is on June 2nd. We're going to get a language lesson from Professor uh, Ticha Ho, uh, a Thai language lesson. So you'll be able to learn some Thai. And then we're heading live uh, to Bangkok uh, to visit uh, international favorite restaurant, Sam Tam Dur, which has locations uh, here in, um, uh, in New York and also in Bangkok and in other parts around the world as well. So don't forget to tune in then June 2nd. Uh, but today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be uh, learning um, uh, about Thai American history, culture, uh, and we are going to be seeing an interview uh, with uh, Dr. Mark uh, Padung Pat, who is the Associate Professor and Director of Asian and Asian American Studies at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Uh, we have uh, been able to record an interview with him. He's also written this book, Flavors of Empire, Food and the Making of Thai America, which we highly recommend uh, to, uh, to you to read to further explore the topics he'll be discussing today. So, um, uh, so we're going we're gonna to watch an interview that uh, my colleague Cindy and I conducted with him last week. And then after that, we are actually going live to two restaurants in the DC and greater Baltimore area. Uh, we're going to be visiting, visiting Bangkok Joe's in Georgetown, Washington, D.C., and meeting Chef Uli. And then we will be heading to uh, outside of Baltimore in the suburbs in Towson, Maryland, uh, Siranush uh, Tanam Noi, uh, who is the owner of Absolute Thai Sushi and Thai Landing. And so we will be getting some um, uh, cooking demos and learning about their story and their journeys here to the U.S. as well. So I think I should probably start with uh, that my, uh, that I'm Thai American. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, my parents immigrated from Thailand in the late 1970s. Uh, my father from, from Bangkok and my mother actually from Ayutthaya. Uh, and they came separately. They met in LA uh, and I grew up in, uh, in Los Angeles. And so as a Thai American, you know, one of the things I sort of, um, which is I think a, a common story for a lot of uh, children of immigrants, right? Like, you know, trying to 
find my identity as a Thai American, right? And so um, I'm gonna fast forward to, uh, you know, college, I went to the University of Oregon, re became really interested in Asian American history, and, you know, was, uh, was turned on to writing a dissertation and going to graduate school to write the first history of Thai Americans in Los Angeles. And, you know, I had a lot of professors who encouraged me and supported me along the way. Um, but the funny thing about this whole, you know, topic or the, the, how I came to writing about food is that I didn't want to write about food at all. Uh, it was something that I had grown up with and that I had become associated with quite often. And so I really wanted to write a book about Thai Americans, a history of Thai Americans outside of food, right? Like I, I wanted to say, my point was there's this whole other history that people don't know about and all we talk about is Thai food. Um, but then I started to realize that a lot of the things that I was interested in exploring within the Thai American community, which is immigration, um, you know, suburbanization, identity, community, it's all obviously wrapped up with food and that I could use food as an entry point or a window to talk about all the things that I felt were really important. Um, you know, again, labor exploitation, immigration, all those issues, globalization, as you mentioned. Um, and so that's how, you know, when I, I was at USC as a graduate student, it went from just a book about Thai Americans or a dissertation about Thai Americans to then, you know, let me focus on the food as a way to kind of uh, tie all of these themes together. And so that's how I eventually came to write about uh, the history of Thai food, you know, going from not wanting to do it at all <laughs> to, you know, writing a, an entire book on the way Thai food uh, became important to Thai American identity and community in LA. So I think the first thing, um, just to kind of uh, offer a, the broadest context is, you know, the, the reason Thai people came to the United States, you know, uh, and when they did was because of uh, US foreign policy interests in Southeast Asia, uh, especially right after World War II, where, you know, there were, the US was concerned about the spread of communism. So um, they intervene into Thailand because they feel like that's the place where they can combat um, you know, the growth of communism in Southeast Asia. And so the only, like the major reason why Thai people even came here is because those connections were made in that period. And so um, when Thai, the first kind of wave of Thai immigrants comes during that, that period, so the 1950s and 60s, you get a lot of, um, you know, Thai male um, students from Bangkok who come and they make up kind of the first cohort, a lot of students. Uh, so they come to study in the United States at, at um, in colleges and universities, uh, and then by uh, you know the 1970s and 80s you get the second and third waves, which are more women, um, more uh, uh, ties from various parts of Thailand, right? So not just urban Bangkok, but rural North um, and various other uh, regions in Thailand, um, and they're also considered you know sort of unskilled labor, right? Uh, so they they make up the uh, workforce for a lot of the, the service sector jobs in the United States. And so that, that's kind of the, a, a quick demographic profile of the kinds of Thai people that are coming in when they come. Um, and just to, to add in there as well, there's a lot of uh, Thais who come um, with student visas and tourist visas, but then they kind of eventually overstay those visas. Um, and they play a critical role in the, the food culture in Thai American and, and Thai restaurant culture in Los Angeles because uh, that's the ma ma majority labor force um, is a lot of these students and um, who eventually then become kind of undocumented workers. Uh, and so they're here, right? They're in LA, 1950s, 1960s. One of the things that students and workers they that alike, one of the things that they really struggle with is that the, the, the food is just not the same, right? Like, like they really miss Thai flavors. And I think in, in, in my book, I talk about yum, right, as the Thai flavor profile that, that, that they crave. And that's that balance of uh, spicy, salty, sweet, sour, um, you know, that, that wonderful balance that I think is, is the essence in some ways of Thai cuisine um, is missing. And so they, there's no Thai ingredients. There are some Chinese ingredients that they can use 
um, but there's no fish sauce, there's no uh, bai makrut, there's no, you know, canned good, there's just no Thai ingredients. So at that moment, the 1960s, uh, Thais in LA, Thai immigrants try to get Southeast Asian and Thai ingredients in a couple of ways. The first is, you know, they smuggle it in with, uh, in, you know, with their, in their personal affects, right? So when they're coming from Thailand, they just throw some stuff into their suitcases, uh, bring it over for personal use, right? Or to try to grow it at home. Um, and you were allowed to bring some stuff, right? So it, it was smuggling, but it was, you know, you, you were allowed to bring it for your own personal use. So that was one way. Um, and then the second way was to, um, and this is, you know, really, really interesting, is to just try to uh, recreate and use and substitute, right? So going to Chinatown and getting soy sauce to try to use it in place of fish sauce. Uh, and so it was just being, I guess, creative in those ways, using cayenne pepper instead of Thai chili, right, to at least try to replicate um, some of the spiciness. Uh, and you can tell all this from if you look at some of the cookbooks in the 1960s, you can see what ingredients were and were not available and what kinds of ingredients uh, people were using to substitute. Uh, anchovy paste, I, I need to say that one. Anchovy paste instead of fish sauce, right? Uh, so just, you know, you had the smuggling going on, you had, um, you know, uh, the, the substitutions of ingredients. And then in somewhere in the late 1960s, a group of Thai women discovered a bai makrut tree in Riverside, which is about 60 miles um, away from downtown LA. And they would make these weekend pilgrimages to go to this tree and then pick the leaves off uh, of the bai makrut trees and then take them back home and freeze them uh, to use. And bai makrut, you know, otherwise known as kafir lime leaves, you know, that's really the basis where a lot of Thai cooking you um, it's the basis for Thai curry paste, um, for nam pik pao, which you use for tom yam soup. So that provides, you know, a kind of authentic, if we want to use that word, right? An authentic, it was authentic to them. So an authentic Thai flavor. Uh, and so there were all kinds of ways uh, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to get Southeast Asian and Thai ingredients until the 1970s with the opening of the Bangkok market. Um, and Pramot Tilaka Mongkun opens the Bangkok market in East Hollywood, also starts an import export company. Um, and so, you know, import export uh, companies are pivotal to navigating a lot of the trade policies in order to bring in Southeast Asian and, and Thai ingredients to the United States. And so that, that early 1970s is, is when the doors really open uh, and it becomes widely available. You can get anything in, the, in, the, in this grocery store that you can cook at home, but then you can also use for your restaurants if you wanted to open a restaurant. I think the first thing to be said is, you know, I think there, there is a dominant kind of Thai restaurant menu or that has become representative of Thai food, right? And that's um, reflective of central Thai cooking. We have, you know, or, or royal Thai cooking, right? What, the, um, what, what people in central Thailand uh, would cook. And that was, you know, it's your standard, standard menu of pad Thai, curries, stir fried noodles. Um, and so that has become kind of the typical menu that you would find or that has come to stand in for Thai food. And that really starts in you know, the, the 1970s and 80s, um, at least in LA. And I think it, it builds out and grows out from LA. Um, and you know, initially the first Thai restaurants and, and how what Americans uh, came to see as Thai food was Thai Chinese food. So a lot of uh, Thai restaurant owners opened up as Thai Chinese to try to say, hey, you know, you're all familiar with this Chinese food and flavors. Um, and then when they would come in, it would slip them, you know, some Thai food and say, well, here's, try this, right? Uh, and so I think there's a little bit of like, uh, you know, American perceptions of Thai food was that it's maybe Chinese or is related to kind of a Chinese, uh, Chinese dishes. Um, but then by the 1980s, you know, Jonathan Gold, the prolific food writer, um, 
you know, begins to, for, for at least an American audience, right, begins to say, hey, it's, this is not what, um, this is not, not, not the Chinese, it's certainly not Chinese food. Uh, <laughs> and it's not what, what you think of as um, kind of typical Asian food. Thai food is its unique thing on its own. Um, and so it's really in the 70s and 80s that uh, Americans come to see Thai food through that standard menu. But, you know, I think even then in the 80s, uh, Thai restaurants in LA, they were already making like interesting um, culinary decisions uh, that showed that they were also trying to um, evolve, I guess is the word, or, or play around with, be creative with Thai cuisine. I mean, you had some chefs in West Hollywood, Beverly Hills area, right? Like um, it's during the aerobics generation. So you had uh, some Thai restaurateurs who were like, you can switch your proteins, right? And I, I can make these dishes with tofu instead of meat. And, you know, tofu is not a central protein in, uh, in Thai cooking. We use it, but it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not like the main thing in the dish. And so they were making those changes, um, introducing brown rice, right? As a substitute for white rice, which is not something that, you know, is found in Thai, <laughs> the Thai food culture as well. So th this was already happening in the 1980s, but you know all all of that was kind of um, you know outside of what Americans typically thought of as as Thai cuisine, um, and that came to be in part because you know Thai Chinese restaurants, but then also uh, I think Thai restaurant tours you know stuck with really kind of what they felt like um, was a safe menu, and that's I think that's true for a lot of immigrant restaurant tours, right? Like, you have to play it safe, not just because it's economically viable and it makes it makes good sense economically, but you have to play it safe because, you know, there's a fear that how is this food going to reflect you as a person and how is it going to reflect your community? So you can't make, you can certainly, but it's risky to try to do something that's really different and unique because you run the risk of then someone saying, what is this weird thing that you're cooking? Uh, so you know, I think they pretty stuck to that kind of, here's what works, here's the menu, and that, and, and what worked, and what worked well, um, was set in, in, in the 1980s. I mean, we look now, and there's all kinds of regional variations, um, and that's been taking place for a couple of decades, but you have Northern Thai food, Isan cuisine, Southern Thai cooking styles, um, that are being introduced. And so I think that uh, second generation Thai chefs like Chris Yen Bamroom, who is an LA based chef, and you know, they're just challenging what authenticity really means. And I think we're at a really interesting moment where you have Thai chefs in the United States, Thai American chefs who are just trying to expand their own creative culinary vision um, of what Thai food means. Um, but also just really break that notion of authenticity, right? So you have just a lot of chefs who are like, What's, what I'm cooking is authentic, right? What, what my grandmother taught me is authentic. It doesn't have to meet the, the idea of what is authentic to um, American society, but what I'm making is authentic to me. It's authentic to my roots, whether those roots go back to Southern Thailand or to LA, that this is authentic. And I think that that's a really important and, and interesting shift uh, you know, for, for the listeners out there who just really want, you know, a, a kind of very interesting firsthand sense of how Thai food has evolved um, from the 1960s to now, um, go pick up uh, Marie Wilson's Siamese Cookery. It is, it was the very first Thai cookbook published in the United States. And I know it's called Siamese Cookery, uh, but it was published in 1965 and it was written by uh, a white American woman from West Los Angeles. Uh, and if you just are able to get your hands on that book, you can see the kind of ingredients and recipes that were considered popular or what was, you know, Marie Wilson believed like, hey, this might be something the American consumer or the American eater might be interested in. And you'll get a sense of the kinds of ingredients that she was using, the kinds of ingredients that were available at the time in the United States to, in order to cook Thai food. And you get some glimpses of 
Thai voices because, you know, she had a lot of Thai friends and, um, you know, uh, it, there's some, some moments where you get a sense of what, what Thai people were telling her that she could and could not use <laughs> in her Thai cooking. So if, if, if you're interested in just like a, well, you know, I, I'm just, I just want to know ingredient wise, like how far we've come or how much it's evolved. I think if you can use that as a starting point, you'll really see the kind of changes and evolution in terms of ingredients, uh, flavors, and, and dishes. Really, really fascinating, huh? Um, so um, you can actually purchase Mark's book uh, to learn more uh, through the, the link that we dropped in and also that other cookbook that he mentioned, uh, Siamese Cookery, if you want a little uh, uh, glimpse at the history of uh, Thai American cooking. Um, and uh, yeah, it really just uh, incredible uh, to, to have him as a resource and to, um, uh, to get to chat with him. Uh, we also have the full interview. That was just a clip of our interview. It's about 25 minutes total, and you can view the entire thing on our, uh, on our Thai uh, virtual program page, um, which again is in the chat. There's lots of links. To, to all of that. So um, now that we have a little bit of context about the history of Thai food uh, in, in America and Thai immigration, um, we're gonna get to meet two chefs uh, who have uh, restaurants uh, in the DC Baltimore area. So uh, first we're gonna head to Washington DC and we are gonna meet Chef Uli Bunyaratapan um, who has been uh, elevating Thai cuisine through uh, her two restaurants. And she uses both traditional cooking methods blended with innovative techniques to bring exciting Thai infusion dishes to uh, American audiences. So um, we are going to Bangkok Joe's to meet Chef Uli. So Chef Uli, um, welcome to the program. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. You're, you're at uh, Bangkok Joe's right now, is that right? Yes, yes. right. And it's, and it's your second restaurant after Thai in Sherlington, which is also still open. Um, but tell us about the concept of Bangkok Joe's and where does that name come from, Bangkok Joe's? Um, I got that question a lot, like, who's Joe's? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, he's not my husband. Um, my husband is Nell. Um, the Bangkok Joe's is actually because of its locations. It's in um, the mix of uh, tourist locations. Um, upscale neighbors and college university is in the Jota Washington Harbor. So um, we decided to do the upscale street uh, food with um, all rice bowl, noodle bowls, um, dumplings, small plates. And there's a section that I call in YOJ um, to um, emphasize that like Bangkok is the suggestive name that it is Thai restaurants. And Joe's to me is like American common names um, for like um, pizza joints, burger joints. Um, you know, we want it to be more like, uh, my husband will say um, it's Thai chef interpretations of American melting pot cuisine. That's the, the face that probably everyone understand. <laughs> yes. So you came from Bangkok originally and what brought you to, to the um, United States? Yeah, Virginia? I'm from Bangkok, Thailand. and. I was here in 1990, uh, no, 1985 after I graduated from high school. I was sent here instead of Paris doing fashion um, to stay with my cousin and study English for nine months. I ended up um, extending my visa two times and got my MBA in information system um, with cum laude. Um, and that um, um, I was um, working while in school in a, a lot of restaurants. Um, that's where I met my husband. We were working in the same restaurants in the early 90s and the owner was about to open another restaurant and asked us to be a small you know, partner. So I was young and fun and like to create things. And um, I told the owners that um, the food here need to be similar to the California style design restaurants. So I was put in an idea and sharing with the owners and creating the menu and the food with the chef, working with the chef. Um, since then, it's probably my transitions from my computer field to the food. Mm -hmm. And I ended up knowing that I love cooking. So that's all I've been doing for the last um, 30 years, <laughs> cooking. It's amazing. And so um, 
Well, and so you were talking about sort of incorporating these different flavors and sort of really like, a, I mean, at Bangkok Joe's, when you look at the menu, it's, there's lots of flavors from yeah. other Asian cuisines as well. Um, and, and you have a dumpling bar also, don't you? Yes. It's all in the concept um, of Thai street food um, because it's like in Thailand, the food stalls everywhere is either grill or steam or rice bowl, noodle bowls. You see that a lot. So when we open Bangkok Joe's, we would have that concept in mind that we want some kind of, you know, um, upscale but casual. So we first want to do the satay bar and then um, we got um, chain our minds to do the dumpling. And we were the first dumpling bar in Washington, D.C. And we're not doing just like the Chinese dumpling. It's all inspired, unique dumplings that we do here. And you, didn't you train with a, with a, um, a chef? Uh, in um, no, Hong I'm Kong? a self-taught. Um, it's no, but, all in common sense. <laughs> but you mentioned me. the dumpling. Didn't you mention the dumpling chef before that you... Oh, uh, before we opened the Thai restaurant, um, Bangkok Joe's, we, um, I went to Thailand and to train with one of the top chef, um, dumpling chef um, in Thailand. It's the first dumping house in Thailand. It's um, in the Savoy group. Um, he's from Hong Kong and we paid to learn. So I learned the basic of Chinese dumpling and then that got into me to inspire to do our own, like we have the Thai Penang, curry chicken buns that was on the first menu of Bangkok Joe since 2003. Wow. Um, oh, I know we have some photos of some of your, um, your dishes. Uh, wh when we were going back and forth, you kind of mentioned that you had certain concepts, that you had sort of traditional updates and creative twists. Oh, and... yes. You want to um, talk about that a little bit as we show some photos maybe? Yeah, it's, it's like, when I first opened um, my own restaurants, um, well, I, it was in um, early 90s. And then um, I opened my um, Thai in Shirlington, T-H-A-I in Shirlington. It was in um, 1995. And a couple of years later, I opened Bangkok Joe's. That was the first Bangkok Joe's, the picture that you just seen. It's opened in 2003. And we closed it down um, after the lease ended. Um, that was beautiful and um, we love it so much and the food is all um, Thai inspired um, looking. It's actually some of them, um, you know, style my food will be, um, I will call it update traditionals. Um, that what we do since my first restaurant, Thai in Shellington in 95. Um, we update the look, by updated I mean I use pretty much the same ingredients, um, but I just updated the look. Um, if you had the photo of my previous, um, that's my current um, Bangkok Joe's. This is the Joe's. current one. I think the one. Yeah, it's a Bangkok Joe. Um, we call it BJ2, <laughs> Bangkok Joe 2.0. We closed the first <laughs> one down because the lease is in and then um, we reopened it back um, in uh, 2016 until today. Um, Joe was asking about the, the one on the lower right in the first slide. I think he's talking about the dish in that. On the bottom right there. Oh, the, that's the dumpling. My first dumpling. That's smoked duck, giant smoked duck one time. Oh, yum. So this yep. was the original one. And then the next photos are the current one. The current so one. A little bit yes. of an update there, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's more like casual, it's more like, you know, noodle place, um, like bowl. And right. we also have the NYOJ that I call not your ordinary Joe's. <laughs> you know, usually because the Joe is the average Joe, so we want to try to do those are the section that I probably put some of my specialty, um, you know, um, something that unusual or something that I have fun, you know, I, I put it there. <laughs> yeah, so some photos of the food here, uh, uh, forward here. Um, so this is sort of, uh, you're saying this is sort of like that's the update, update traditionals, yeah. It's, Pretty much very traditional. Um, nobody has seen the top left. We call that tricolor gems. It's uh -huh. actually the King Lama two Thai dumpling. It's all white. Um, the Thailand is um, called Kanom Jeep Thai. I was working in one of the old um, hotels um, in, in Thailand, um, you know, just for, for training. Um, and I saw that they do this Thai um, Kanom Jeep that I haven't ever seen before but it's all serving with pork. 
So I know Americans turned off by pork back then in 2003. So I was um, playing around with it. The pink one, I put shrimp in it. Um, the yellow one, I put crab. And then I leave the pork on the greens. And I also added some sauce because there was a, where's the sauce? For dumpling, need the sauce. So I just created a sauce that go well with it. Um, you know, something like that is updated traditional. Yeah. Right? The flower right? That's the most recent uh, my Songkran Thai New Year. is Thai street banana, the Thai banana, the grilled mm -hmm. bananas. And I update, just updated the look. That's, yeah. um, you know, most of my food like that. Patay right. Yong. And they're beautiful. You know, instead I mean, for of those, crab. For those that are calling in, um, those, those dumplings are, are, are beautifully colored, pink and yellow and green. That's yeah, those are Chef special Uli was talking for about. Songkran Tiny Year. Yeah. And um, do we have a next slide? Yeah. The so next this, one is concept, um, right? creative. I call that creative because like the cow soy on the top left, that's the dish the that I'm going to show you guys um, today is Bangkok Joe style cow soy. I think I just, um, you know, be creative and you can just use your imaginations. The second one on the right is the sushi curry shrimps mm. and um, the pla tuna. That one we did on the embassy um, promotion. And I think that's on YouTube too. I had to do pla tuna um, outside. See the bottom left is the masaman curry um, roti that we have as a you know small dish. You know something like that is you just put your creations into it. That's that's the way I do my food, and I also do something that's fun. I think it's the next one. I think the next one's actually some fusion stuff here, right? Oh, the next one is the fusions. Um, yeah, I do some fusions like the top left. I've been there. This been there since like you know nineties. Is salmon and rice rolls. I do um, with jasmine rice. And we've been doing this uh, for a long time. And I know it's right because um, the Japanese restaurants across the street, you know, always come, uh, employees always come and order this dish. Mm -hmm. And later we treat. <laughs> and we do some, um, um, like, um, I, I mentioned the bowls already, that Thai um, chicken bowl. And we also have giant um, lobster hagao. And my favorite, customer favorite is my creme brulee. It's the French inspired with Thai herbs. I have tested with many herbs and I found out the spicy, it kicked the spot. So we oh, did wow. Thai pepper creme brulee Ooh. with chocolate spoon and candy cilantro. Oh, Imagine that those spoon. food is in, in the early 90s, <laughs> in yeah. the mid 90s. And um, people were, I mean, the concept was scare off some critics a little bit like, you know, this is not Thai food, none of it assembly Thailand. We did lamb sausage on, um, um, lamb isan sausage on um, a fall, the first menu that we opened. And they even critiqued that Thailand doesn't have sausage. Okay, so um, <laughs> yeah, that was like 30 years ago. Right. So um, yeah, and I also did some fun, stuff like you know right so this is my style of Thai <laughs> right you just put your imagine imaginations in those are fun food like and you can you see know, just in the photos how fun they are I mean the, yeah there's the like joke, with the phone green curry is the rice congee with green curry and grilled shrimps you know like um and the second one is um um duck curry is um duck and rice kokre French cookery, um plated with the pineapple um, curry. So, you know, something like that, you just use your imagination. Oh, and my favorite one is the bottom left, is the Boloi um, Thai coconut uh, sticky rice flour dessert. Oh, and, wow. you know, I just make it look like, it doesn't look like Boloi. You know, you, you won't be able to find the food like this in Thailand. You know, yeah. I mean, well, the dish might be, yes, Boloi, you can find Boloi, but your boloi might not look like my boloi. <laughs> yeah. So well, just, so you're, you're, you're going to cook something for us today. Why don't we... Um... Yes, yeah, so we're going to do the cow soy today. Okay, let yeah. me go to the kitchen. We at the dumpling bar, okay? Let yes. me go to the kitchen and do it real quick, okay? Absolutely. And Joe is, is commenting. He, he really loves your take on the Thai sweet, savory uh, dessert uh, flavor profile there. He also says that... <laughs> It looks like if Le Den made Thai dessert, your, your stuff is very, very elegant. I don't know if you're familiar with Le Den, uh, but it's a very fancy restaurant here in New York. We can see you. Yeah, so this cow soy um, is, 
uh, very special to you as well, right? This is a little bit different yes. than maybe some people are familiar with. Um, yeah, khao soy is one of the my favorite dish because it's, it's remind me of my grandmother's. My grandmother's from Chiang Mai. And this dish is the national dish of um, Chiang Mai. Um, it's actually the Chinese Muslim dish. It's from Yunnan, China, that's came down um, to the northern part of Thailand, which is Chiang Mai, and Burma and Laos. Um, this is one got in France. Um, and the, my mom would cook it. Well, it's, I call her mom. She lessons me. And we love this so much. And she always cook it with no coconut milk. That's the traditional one. The cow soy will cook with no coconut milk. Um, and then Thai has adapted uh, to add coconut milk in later. And also um, the noodles was um, made from rice flour and made into a sheet. That's the name come from. Cow is mean Thai is rice. So it's made with rice flowers and made into a sheet and then they will cut it up. That's what the soy means. It's julien, you know, cut it up. Um, and later Thai changed it to yellow, yellow noodles. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick. Um, it's actually pretty easy. If you have all the ingredients, um, I'm just gonna put everything in the magic of the blender. Yes, I'll, well, in the old days, this dish, we don't have the curry paste available. So I do it from the scratch. And that dish was critiqued by none of it assembly Thailand in 1995, because no other restaurants was offered in the East Coast. Well, right now we got the magic of the, you know, um, innovations and importer stuff. So we got right. more, a lot more ingredients into it. So those uh, make your life a little bit easier. But I also added, you know, the herbs to make it more authentic, okay? This is a curry, um, yellow curry paste. Um, I'll use about two tablespoons in here. And then I will add um, first is the um, lemongrass. Mm. And then I have um, garlic. It's also two gloves. And if you guys interested in um, in the recipe, I narrow this down to the you know you can make this at home easily. And this is the turmeric, the fresh turmeric. Let me show you the difference between turmeric and the galanga. This is the the turmeric is small one, okay? Right. Uh, and the galanga is the giant one. It's the same family with the ginger, but it have different aroma. And, and you, you know, we usually use in a tomka and um, in a curry paste, okay? You no, know you have turmeric when everything's stained orange, right? <laughs> or yellow. Yes, right, right, yeah. You need that. And it's also good for you, all these herbal, okay? And we use cilantro root, actually. But here in the States, most of the cilantros came without root. So why not? We use the stem. That's fine, okay? And um, um, we use a uh, shallot, too. Those are actually in the curry paste. And here comes um, the pepper, okay, to make the curry spicy. Well, um, on this, this is like um, made for two. So one pepper should be enough, but if you like spicy, you can add more, okay? But I just gonna put like one medium ones in here and some coconut milk. I'll use about two cup of coconut milk in here. Okay. We use coconut creams in the curry. And we'll use coconut milk, the lighter one, on, um, um, on the soup and the dessert, okay? All right, and then that's it. You just put, if you have all the ingredients, you just put everything in the blender with the magic of the blend. Boom, you got the curry piece, okay? It's <laughs> fast forward. All right, Perfect. here we go. Yes, and then we're gonna cook this curry paste, okay? Uh, we're going to cook the curry paste to um, make it thinner. Like so. And probably all the aromas are released as well when you're cooking it. Yeah. Let me see. You're going to cook the curry paste and you just season the, the curry. That's the point. Okay. You just want to season the curry paste. 
let me tell you the trick. Some of the restaurants, most of the restaurants will serve this curry paste with the chicken. Okay. When you cook, the traditional will use chicken leg, chicken thigh, chicken quarters, whatever you. Um, if you use the chicken, most of the recipe will tell you to cook it in the curry paste like this. But my suggestion, you will cook it in the light coconut milk with a little bit of salt first because the chicken releases a lot of juice. If you cook in the curry paste, it's dilute down a lot of curry paste and you cannot control it. So you cook in separate pots, mm, the chicken, and then you just add the chicken to um, when it's um, cook it like almost um, well done, you can just put it on the curry paste. Okay, and add some juice from the chicken, a little bit of the coconut uh, juice. That's make it better. So here at Bangkok Joe's, we do with beef brisket. So um, I don't have juice from the beef. Then I will add some water. Same coconut milk and water to dilute it. Okay. And you just want to season your, your curry, right? Here I have um, some salt. I usually like to use salt in my curry, and I also want some authentic city, so I will add a little bit of this sauce in here too. And the sugar, it will be nice to add the sugars to round out the flavor. This is a very big flavor dish. Okay, you have all the spice, all the flavorful spice in it. Okay, and and you mm. just want to simmer this. And okay. Chef Lee, you did say you did say brisket, right? Sometimes it's made with beef brisket. Um, yes, it's a beef brisket. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Wow. It has we... been roasted for three hours. Oh my gosh. Yes. So we do have That's just a few here. more minutes left. I know we're right in the middle. Oh, Ooh, look okay. At that. It's yeah. It's actually a very big piece, and I will cut it up. Okay. And um. You know, we just need to use some noodles, right? I usually slide it thin first, and then we'll cut it like this. Oh my god! And gosh. that's that's like one orders we do here. Okay. Wow. And you just want to boil some water and cook the noodles. Okay. There's two type of noodles: right. the oh, bigger uh -huh. one and the small one. The bigger one. I would prefer for cow soy because it's hold up well with the curry, with the thick curry. The smaller one I use to fry them and for the, you know, crispy because this is have a lot of textures and flavor of dish. The textures is a lot. I'll plate it for you so you see how it looks like actually. Okay. I already have um, done boiling the noodles. You just wanna put the noodles on here and you want to put your beef right onto the plate. Wow. I I'm going to make it fast forward, there. okay? I just got to yeah. pour it in. It looks fantastic. Make, make, make it fast better. Huh. Okay. And then you just need some things to go on top, right? Of course. Here. Usually some people will serve it on the side. You can use um, red onions or shallots, what have you. I'll use um. Um, onions and this is pickle mustard it's make a sour mm -hmm. um, taste to it but you can also add some lime I, I'll do both because um, the lime is also add the freshness to it and this is the extra that we put oh. the onsen egg <laughs> yes it's outside of Bangkok Joe we put the onsen egg to it oh wow it's a Japanese onsen egg so it add the extra creamy to the dish Right. And also you want to put the crispy noodles on top. You know, I fry up the little one, the little um, noodles, and we'll put it on top and garnish it with the, the oh cilantro. Oh my gosh, this yes. looks so delicious. I mean, I'm... And another thing that you cannot miss is yes. this chili paste. We made our own chili that's go with it. This one, these two are served on the side. So people should squeeze some lime and add some of the chili, you know, cooked in um, shallot oil. Very oh. nice, very spicy. Wow. So this is the plate of cow soy, Bangkok chili. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's beautiful. And uh, Cindy was asking about a, that's a, a chicken egg, of course. It's just a regular chicken egg. Uh, Japanese oh, yes, style. the chicken eggs that have been forced for 40 minutes. 
in about 150 degrees um, um, water bar. Okay, and one more question before we go uh, to, uh, to outside Baltimore. Um, uh, Joe wants to know if you think Americans are ready for a Thai seafood grill restaurant. Um, you asking me? I, I guess so, yes, he's asking. Do you think oh, Americans um, are ready? Thai seafood restaurants? Seafood that, grill. Seafood grill, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great because it's, um, but on the East Coast, like maybe further on Maryland side would be easier to get um, a fresh crab and seafood. We would love some, you know, to have the grilled seafood, you know, like in Thailand, the big shrimp, you know, so I can do sushi prawn easily Ooh. and, you know, just spicy dipping sauce or maybe in my water. Um, so w before we go, we'd love to see you hold the cow soy for us so we can get a oh. good a good view of you. Um, this is, I mean, this is a, a dish that's near and dear to your heart with your own little twists. And uh, I think uh, really speaks to what, what you're doing at Bangkok Joe's. And it's, it's amazing. So I, I know that I'm it's ready a for- It's customer favorite. And I can't take this out. It's been here since 2003. Yeah. Almost right 20 years. So, as we can see. Well, and the critics will say, this is non-assembly, uh, it's non -ass none of it assembly Thailand. Can you believe that? <laughs> that was, um, you know, 30 years ago. And now people are more adventurous to try more global cuisine. And I yep. believe that Thai food will, you know, make a way to 5,000 and counting. Let's try. Abs <laughs> absolutely, yes. Well, thank okay. you so, so much. Thank this you so much, Brian, for having me. Mouth watering, but our pleasure. Thank you. And uh, we've dropped all your info into the chat so people will find their way down to um, Bangkok Joe's. I say down. Yeah, you'd be at Washington Harbor. In New York, could be up if you're calling from, from further south. Uh, but anyway, so thank you so, so much. Okay, uh, and, all right. And, and now we're, we're running a little behind, but we are heading to Towson, Maryland uh, to meet uh, Siranush uh, Tangan Noi, who is the owner of uh, a few restaurants. We're gonna be joining her at Absolute Thai Sushi, but she also owns Thai Landing, uh, which uh, is in the process of moving, but in Baltimore itself. Um, so uh, welcome to the program, Siranush, are you there? How are you? Um, I'm okay. Yeah. So thank you so much. So you're you're calling us from your your new location, uh, right? This yes. is the second location of Absolute mm -hmm. Thai Sushi. Um, right. Yes. So tell us a little bit about how you came here. Um, also from Bangkok, correct? Yes, uh, I'm, I am from Bangkok, um, and actually, um, yeah, we um, I I I came to the U.S. about like um, twenty years ago. Yeah, to study my master's degree in, 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 in accounting. Yeah, and then, you know, didn't think about much of the cooking because my family is not like really support for that. So yeah, but um, when I came here, um, I start, okay, that, it happened that my, uh, that a Thai landing is very close to my university. It's just like across the street. And by that time, uh, Thai, Thai landing is a like, uh, one of the most uh, popular Thai um, restaurant in town. So uh, I always want to work there as a student, but um, it's very really hard to get in there. So and I end up working for uh, Thai landing or competitor uh, in, 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 instead, which is also um, very awesome. Like I develop like some skill of cooking a little bit, you know, kind of learn a little bit. Yeah. So then, um, but uh, after I graduate, yeah, so I, so I decided to pursue my career in accounting and move around like from, from, uh, from Baltimore to uh, DC and to Philadelphia, you know, and then come back and to get a full-time job in DC. Yeah, that, that, that's how, you know, that is kind of, you know, missing, a, a little bit like about like uh, uh, restaurant, but then I think on that year have like a huge snowstorm about like 10, 10, 10 years ago, have a really huge snowstorm and the, the whole city like shut down. So, and a friend of mine, and we have nothing to do. So, and a friend of mine called and said, oh, you know, Thai, uh, Thai, uh, Thailand is available. So, you know, maybe we could do something. Yeah. So I, my my sister and I and a very good friend of mine, so we decided to do that together. So that's that's how 
Yeah. yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. And and so uh, so you so you bought Thai Landing with your sister, and so Thai Landing is is just recently in the process of moving to a new location, right. and then you opened this uh, this new restaurant in the middle of the pandemic, right? The yes, it's in the middle of the pandemic. Actually, the um the lease finished last year. Yeah, like in the middle of the pandemic, and then but but we discussed with the landlord uh, before about the future yeah and then it's like we couldn't agree on a lot of things so we decide not to uh, renew the like, like the, the, the lease and we got a lot of offer yeah like to open the new uh, local like to, to the new lo uh, location yeah so and then we choose a uh, thousand because it's like it's not so far away from from the old place and has it's like kind of a uh, white brand you know the, the town is um, growing you know the parking is uh, very good yeah so and then after that after that i also got another offer to open like thai landing at um Bevedia square market which is like a big like one of the most uh, popular food hall in in uh in oh, uh, in yeah, still in uh, in Baltimore City. Yeah. So yeah, so we decide to do that. You know, we is going to 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 open. So Thailanding will be reopened again in a few months. Yeah, at the at, at the Belvedere Square Market. Great, but so uh, but absolute Thai sushi is sort of a fusion. You're doing a little bit. You're doing Thai, Thai food, yeah. and you're doing some sushi. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Because um, we actually own another successful award-winning um, sushi uh, restaurant in Baltimore City. It's called uh, Hilo Poke and Sushi. Yeah, it's, it's open for like five, for five years now. And that, that place is uh, really popular. People know us, they, you know, so yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah, when we doing it here, uh, um, originally we want to do just Thai food because because that's what the that's what the the landlord wants. But then the COVID happened, so we think about okay maybe we should do like board, you know. So because we want to get like small kitchen in two place and doing you know, and since we have uh, a lot of experience in um sushi you know, and the um, Japanese, some Japanese. So we want to do, so we want to be like best Thai and best sushi here in Thailand. Yeah. yeah, so that, that was a goal, yeah. Well, and, and you're so. gonna do some cooking for us or your chef is gonna do some cooking for us, right? You're right, yeah. Today. So tell yeah, us a little bit about what you're gonna cook and let's let's head over to the kitchen. We're running a little, a little behind and I, I know the restaurant mm -hmm. is gonna open soon, isn't it? So okay, just just a little bit about my chef. Yeah, here's uh my chef uh chef art uh Su Sai Bin Wang. Yeah, he's from Chiang Mai. So you know he but but he actually he's he's a very good uh su 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 chef. Yeah. So what what he gonna do today is like one of our classic um uh, menu is um drunken noodle. Drunken noodle. Um, yeah, but the, the drunken noodle we made is like the, kind of like the the, uh, the 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 southern style, so it's different to the the to, to the, the other place. Yeah, like we made the noodle first, and then yeah we okay yeah, and then we make the sauce you know with the mint chicken and put able, on top of that. Yeah. Are you able to put the camera a little bit closer to the? To, to the, the pan. pan, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now everyone's everyone's saying how hungry they are. Now they're really hungry. The closer we get, um, oh yes, yes, even better. And so we see that that cooking. So he's sorry. He's starting with the yeah. He he making the like like the sauce with the uh, mint chicken. It's kind of like a, like like a stir fry mint chicken with um garlic and chili. Okay. You know, if this is uh, pretty much like a uh, pad thai in Thailand, it's like mm. like the like very simple dish, but the customer loves so much. So we, you know, for over um, thirty years, this one is like most popular. So sure. yeah. 
Um, and you said you cook the noodles separately, so then you add them in towards the end, I guess. Right, yeah. Okay. So that, okay. Added some Thai basil, is that? Yeah, it's Thai basil. That. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing uh, how you okay. can sort of smell the food and salivate for it. And so in this in the separate walk here yeah <laughs> we, we, we actually do like like in, in, in one walk but uh this uh, this time we do um like uh separate yeah, oh okay okay you're doing it separately for us today so yeah great but this and these like, are flatter a, noodles a, correct right uh, yeah like a rice noodle rice noodles and then we, we cook it with some um, soy, soy sauce, you know, and then of course. Hey, and you said this is one of the most popular dishes here. Yeah, this is one of the most popular, but I, I, I decided to choose this dish because it's, you know, it's simple and it's like so who we are, you know, this, this, this um, recipe, like, bring a lot of customer for us for over um, 30 years. So that's And so this is yeah. a recipe from both Thai landing and at Absolute and Thai. Absolute Thai, yes. Yeah. So yeah, we this is keep a staple. It. Yeah, we, we, we think about to change to something else, but eventually, you know, we just go back to this one. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, yeah. So, so there we go. So that's the almost it's fully plated and you're adding the right uh, the the chicken uh, stir fry there. Right, yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Um this 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 way is the it's like the, the southern style. So you know if, if, if you go to Bangkok or some other place where you yeah, people cook uh, drunken noodle in, in uh in the different style. And that yeah, and we have another dish with the uh chef chef oh, adun. Another... Oh, okay. Yeah, chef adun uh uh some he from uh Phuket. Yeah, oh, they, okay. they actually, yeah. So he making uh cow soy, you know. Our cow soy is actually is um created by um one of the chef that we brought from Thailand and. It's so great because this is the way that uh, people like eat, you know, make uh, in, in Thailand. Yeah. So, so yeah, you really do have chefs from, from both ends of the country, from the north and from the south here. So Yes, yeah, we, we really love to do that. Yeah. And that the, the chef make uh, some time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Joe had a question. Do you know why they call it drunken noodles? Um, I, oh, you know, we might have lost your audio. Yeah, there. I think because of it's, it's like, it's very hot, you know, and, and our, our, our restaurant um, opened like 30 something years ago, like we are the first um, restaurant that opened in, in, in the city, right? So, and then, and the, and the, the original chef uh, and the owner, She's from the south, yeah, okay. and she create, yeah, she create this dish, yeah. So, and the customer is, I mean, have a choice to select how spiciness of the dish. So, and you know, we make really, really spicy, yeah. So, and and, oh. and that's and I I I I think that. That and it makes you drink more. Yeah. 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 Um, we also, um, we, uh, we're, we're running just, uh, just about out of time here. I think we're a little past time. These dishes are beautiful um, uh, with the crispy noodles on top. And the, uh, uh, it's fantastic. We also have some, uh, oh, there's more food coming. I feel like we're at a buffet here. Yeah. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, um, yeah, this is hot, uh, hot yai fried chicken. Yeah, that, ah. that, that we do. Yeah, it's really popular. Uh, like in Thailand and in here, like when we first bought in here, it's like one of the most 
bestseller. Yeah, so like is that sticky rice like that. in the in the bag yeah. with it? Yeah, there's a sticky rice in the bag. Yeah, it used to be in the like a, a banana leaf, but yeah, but 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 we didn't do it today, <laughs> and now it's um it's a COVID, so yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Well, these these are, are absolutely hunger inducing. I, I think uh, I think everybody is is ready for lunch at this point, and I know you guys are are getting ready to open for lunch. Um, right. So, uh, was there was there what these are beautiful and really was there something else or? Um, oh yeah, we have. Yeah. Oh, we okay, have, there um, is. Yeah. Um. Sometimes isan. Yeah. This is a new um recipe. So yeah, we put. We put oh. some of the sauce like in, in not 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 Eastern style. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is yeah, the papaya this, salad. Papaya salad. Yeah, but we make like the in the like the um not Eastern style. Yeah. So we really do have uh like almost all the regions of um I think we do have all the regions of Thailand. You know, or don't we? This is the north, uh, the northeast, how, the south. It's not, yeah, it's northern. Oh, oh, and this right. one is like a yeah, Bangkok. You know, like a south, yeah. Bangkok. Thousand, so yeah. Ah, well, I love the the variety here. It, it's it looks just wonderful. So, um, Sirinush, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, really, really wonderful. Thank you. We've dropped in the info thank for both so Thai Landing and Absolute Thai mm -hmm. Sushi. Uh, so when people yeah. are in the Baltimore DC area, we've got lots of food to eat. Um, thank you both. Thank you, Sirinush and Chef Lee, uh, for sharing your stories. Thank uh, you. And, um, thank you. And a special thanks to uh, Dr. Mark Padungpat uh, for uh, that fascinating interview and his incredible book that you all must check out. Um, okay. And uh, thank you again to Sci Thai Select USA uh, for sponsoring these programs and making them possible. Uh, be sure to check out our interac interactive map, as I mentioned, to learn more about the Thai communities and restaurants that we're discussing and then others in the Northeast region. And uh, next Wednesday, we'll be back uh, and we're visiting the outer boroughs of New York City. Uh, to discuss communities and family recipes uh, with uh, Joe DiStefano and two other restaurants. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone. And thank you, chefs. Thank you so much.